Hey Epifade, this week Samsung's management put the company into emergency mode, the first official competitor to the Apple App Store just launched, and Boston Dynamics revealed a really cool new humanoid robot. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Nebula. Starting with the brief, just yesterday Zuckerberg announced a Meta AI, his company's actual rival to ChatGPT. It is powered by the company's major new Llama 3 LLM, which unlike OpenAI, will actually be released open source. And the really big advantage for Meta is its distribution. Meta AI will be available in WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and Messenger, and it can do ChatGPT style answers to prompts, but also image generation, which actually updates as you type, so you can just keep typing to get more and more specific. Meta AI is rolling out in the US now, and it could have a billion users pretty fast, which is wild. Next, Sony announced this week that they'll have an Xperia special event on the 17th of May, likely for an Xperia 1 Mark VI launch event. So all seven of us camera nerds can be really excited about that. Also this week, Polestar, the car company, confirmed in a teaser video that it is indeed launching a Polestar phone next week. It looks pretty clean and a lot like a Meizu phone, probably because Polestar's parent company actually recently bought Meizu. Moving on to AI news, Adobe showed off generative fill, but for video in Premiere Pro. It apparently works a lot like it does in Photoshop, and there's no release date just yet, but the demo video shows branded items or unwanted props being removed from videos, or various shots being extended with a few more frames. Now, if I've ever seen a compelling use case of an NPU or a neural processing unit being built into my computer directly, then this might be it. Like, you don't want to upload gigabytes and gigabytes of data every time you want to make an edit. You want this to happen locally on your machine. So that's pretty cool. And while we are at AI, Logitech said it wants you to summon ChatGPT from dedicated buttons on many of their upcoming mice. And they also built something called the Logi AI Prompt Builder that lets you create presets to help you make better prompts. And if you still didn't have enough ways to launch AI, the first products in our release monitor, simply called the New Nothing Ear and Ear A, also feature a ChatGPT integration of their own. You can just pinch the stems of your earbuds, and if you also have a nothing phone, that should have gotten an update just recently to instantly launch ChatGPT. The earbuds themselves also look great for $99 and $149 respectively, and my studio mate Killian says that they also sound great as well. I've linked to his excellent review down in the description, and while I do think that having a way to launch GPT straight from your earbuds kind of makes sense, I also feel like eventually having an infinite number of dedicated AI launching features will kind of get tiring. It feels like soon this is what all of your devices will look like, just co-pilot buttons on all your keyboards, Logitech prompt builders built into everything, etc. Anyway, also this week, Huawei launched their new Pura 70 line of smartphones, which is basically their new name for the P70 flagship series. The main party trick is that the high-end models come with a motorized, retractable camera, which I think primarily helps Huawei to pack a really large main sensor into the phone without also needing a really large camera bump. Let's see if this tech catches on more broadly. And our final release this week is Insta360's brand new camera called the X4. The company has bumped the resolution to a pretty bonkers 8K this year, which makes for very clear improvements in terms of image quality compared to the predecessor. You get these much nicer lens guards that now simply screw on and off, and the battery life is also almost an hour longer than on the X3. Sadly, the camera is now noticeably bigger, and the price also went up by about 50 bucks, so it now costs $499, but given the substantial increase in image quality, I think that's still pretty cool. Okay, and for my first story of the week, Samsung's leadership has officially declared emergency inside the company due to multiple issues. Executives at all Samsung Group units will now have to work six days a week to shift to a quote emergency mode, which is done to inject a sense of crisis and make all-out efforts to overcome this crisis, said an executive. Intentionally injecting a sense of crisis into a workplace seems like a pretty wild idea if you ask me, especially when many other places around the world are kind of moving into the other direction, embracing four-day work weeks. But yeah, things within Samsung don't seem to be working really well right now. The company's memory chip business in particular went through a huge downturn because weak PC and phone sales across the industry led to weak demand for memory chips, and also because Samsung got increasingly strong competition in this field. Partially because of this, Samsung's semiconductor 
Group recorded an operating loss of $11.3 billion. This dragged the overall profits of Samsung Electronics down to its lowest levels since 2008. The memory chip business did just start to turn around last quarter, but Samsung's display business is fighting a tough battle with China's increasingly competitive BOE, its foundry is struggling as a distant second behind Big Daddy TSMC, and now will also have to fight off Intel as well. Will six-day workweeks for executives help with any of that? I find that a bit questionable. Now, Samsung did receive as much as $6.4 billion to build new chip foundries in Texas, so maybe that will help. Okay, my second story of the week is that the first official competitor to the App Store just went live on iOS. And somehow that is both really exciting and also just really anticlimactic. <laughs> so the store is called Alt Store, and for now it has, wait for it, two whole apps that you can download from it. One of those is a popular Nintendo emulator, and the other one is a clipboard manager that can actually run in the background. Both of those apps were created by the same devs that also made the store itself, and both of them are also in categories that have more or less been banned by Apple for a very long time. So these guys have first put their own apps into their own new store, and now that that's done, they've also invited other developers to distribute their apps over there too. Of course, all the apps that go through alternative stores like this one will still have to be approved by Apple, so if the company decides it does not want to allow emulators or clipboard managers or anything else, else like that on their platform at all, then that will not work either. But I guess still yay for competition. Anyway, we know that Epic and a bunch of others are launching their App Store alternatives soon too. And of course, all of this is a result of new European Union rules, which means that the Alt Store is for now only available in the EU. That said, many other regions often follow what the EU does just a little bit later, so this system might go global at some point too. We've seen that the EU forcing the availability of alternative web browsers has clearly worked on iOS as small browsers started to gain quite a bit of market share, so maybe we will see some competition with app stores too. Okay, and for my third story of the week, humanoid robots are getting really interesting. Boston Dynamics, which is the market leader in making everything from $75,000 robot dogs and also everyone's favorite robot demo, has retired its old version of Atlas. And if that sounds like saying goodbye to the old Terminator, well, guess what? There's a new and slightly more creepy robot replacing it right away. This one is also called Atlas, and its biggest innovation, beyond giving me nightmares with its unnatural rotations, is that it's all electric. The previous Atlas used hydraulics, so it relied on hydraulic fluids inside the robot. You can see on some of the demo videos that the red fluid got a little gory at times. Anyway, the liquids are gone, and it's all electric components now, which among other things can rotate 360 degrees and are also much lighter. Hydraulics can be very useful, but apparently they're pretty heavy and also cumbersome. And looking at the demos, I can't decide if my reaction should be, oh man, we're all gonna die, or oh man, I kind of want one. Hyundai, which now owns Boston Dynamics, will start testing the robot next, and the CEO said that it was absolutely essential that humanoid robots started to move beyond picking up boxes to picking up, quote, heavy, complex, massive things. Apparently, this will include picking up things like wheels at Hyundai before long. Okay, do you like watching the news like this? You know, curated by a hopefully thoughtful creator, also with a little bit of analysis sprinkled on top? Well, if the answer is yes, then check this out. Nebula has just launched Nebula News. It is a dedicated space inside Nebula to catch up with everything that is happening around the world with no distractions. The Friday Checkout is a part of it. Morning Brew has just joined, bringing all of their shows to Nebula. We have brand new news-focused original series like War Room. The team behind TLDR News is curating the whole thing, and it's just a fantastic way to stay up to date with news that you can actually trust without getting bombarded by ads or unnecessary junk. Including this very ad. You could be watching the next Nebula News videos already right now. What an experience! Experience that would be. I really enjoy having a platform that only hosts smart and thoughtful content. And Nebula is, of course, our very own video streaming service built and owned by educational creators, including me, Wendover Productions, Polymatter, Real Engineering, and more. The platform has all of our regular videos, besides just the news as well. There are, of course, many Nebula original series that are completely exclusive to the platform. You get early access to many of our videos, and the whole platform has no ads and no shady tracking. Signing up really helps to support our work directly, and if you sign up using my link, which is down in the description, you will also get an extra good deal. My link brings the cost down to just $30 a year. Mind you, that is for a full year, not a month, but if you don't like ongoing subscriptions at all, you can also instead opt for a lifetime membership. 
So check out Nebula, be sure to use my link in the description because that gets you the discount and it supports me directly. Happy Friday and I'll see you next Friday.